اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم In the last session, we designed a very basic model in Smart PLS 4, whereby we identified that these are factor loadings, this is your beta value, this is your R square, and again, these are the indicators. So, the values that you see on the top of the arrow from the latent variable to the indicator are your loadings. In this session, I'm going to discuss a very few basic concepts with regards to structural equation modeling. It's very important that one clearly understands these concepts before moving forward because these terms will be repeated again and again as we go forward. Understanding the basic concepts, factor loadings. Now these are the values that we saw on the top of the arrow that is Yeah, these are your factor loadings. So what do you mean by factor loadings in simple terms? Factor loadings will tell us how well an item measures the underlying construct. It shows the representation of the item in the construct or that is your latent construct represented by the blue circle. How will I know if the representation is adequate? Now that we are saying that these items are representing or loadings will help you identify whether that particular item is representing the underlying construct or not. How will I know that the representation is adequate? The loading value should be over 0.70. But what happens if the value is less than 0.70? Not all values may be over 0.70. Some of them may be less than 0.70. Some of them may be over 0.70. Some of them may be over 0.80. But what happens if the values are less than 0.70? Now, if the values are less than 0.70, we have to assess whether to remove the item or not. But that is based on what are your other statistics. What is your composite reliability? What is your AVE? We are going to discuss this later. Now, indicator reliability, this is the reliability of the each indicator or item and you calculate it through square of your loadings. What is R square? The value that you see within the blue circle like this. Yeah, this is your R square. So what do you mean by R square? Now look at this arrow pointing towards this value and you do not see any value here because the R square is always for the dependent or endogenous variables in your model. Now, since it is an endogenous variable that is being influenced by another variable and there is one arrow pointing towards it, the R square value is 0.324. Now, R square means change in endogenous dependent variable explained by the exogenous variables. It could be one variable or more than one variable. For example, let's say I've got an R square value of 0.615. So 61.5% change in the dependent variable. Let's say my dependent variable is perceived quality and it is being influenced by three variable ER, RDR and PR. So in this case, 61.5% change in the dependent variable PQ is being explained by these three variables. Now in this case, In this example, I've got 0.324 as my R square value. Now in this case, 32.4% change in organizational performance is being accounted by collaborative culture. Now, what if you had more than one variable pointing towards OP here? Let's assume the value is the same. Now, in that case, 32.4% variance in OP would have been accounted by CC and the other variable because there are now two arrows pointing towards the endogenous variable. Now in this case, what is an endogenous variable? An endogenous variable is one that is being influenced by another variable. Now the endogenous variable can later become an exogenous variable if it influences another variable. Now that may be a bit complex for now and we are going to talk about this later. Or let's have a look at our example. Now, in this case here, organizational support is an endogenous variable as well as an exogenous variable. 
an endogenous variable because internal marketing is influencing organizational support an exogenous variable because organizational support is influencing organizational performance now we are going to test this model as we go along the course next up is beta or path coefficients now where is your beta here is your beta 0.569 in this case that is your beta value or path coefficient it is the weight of impact or how much an impact is there of one variable on the other it also shows how strongly one variable influences another variable normally a value over 0.20 would mean a significant impact of iv on dv in a relationship now some have quoted 0.10 as well no impact with a negative impact now this is not right there is a confusion that when there is a negative sign with the beta value this means no impact no this is wrong no impact does not mean negative impact and negative impact does not mean no impact negative is a direction the same as positive is a direction negative is an impact the same way positive is an impact for example improving servant leadership leads to improved organizational performance now this is a positive relationship so there is a relationship there is an impact now increasing job stress leads to lower or employee performance now there is an inverse relationship there is an impact of stress on employee performance so negative does not mean no impact they are not equal if there is a negative sign this means that there is obviously an impact but in the opposite direction but whether that impact is significant whether your beta value is significant you have to assess or look into p value for that where is your p value where are the rest of these things we are going to look into in coming session whereby we develop a very basic simple structural model So what is construct reliability? Now reliability means consistency. If we go back and collect the data from the same respondents under similar conditions, if I get similar results, this means that my measure was reliable. How would I know statistically if my measure was reliable? Now there are traditional measures that is Cronbach alpha, that is a more conservative approach. Then you've got a modern measure composite reliability. This is a more liberal approach. and within these two we have got row a that is something in the middle between the two the recommended value is 0.70 now if your construct reliability statistic is over or equal to 0.70 maybe for cronbach alpha composite reliability and this row a is normally in between the two and has to be obviously over 0.70 then you say yes your construct was reliable your measure was reliable now in the next session i'm going to talk about construct validity thank you very much